This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of IAC Delaware. Tonight we're going to talk about an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. Amen. And so tonight's uh, subject or tonight's scripture will come from Psalms 100. And I'll ask if the media team will place that on the screen. And it reads, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4, and this is going to be our focal point. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So again, tonight's lesson is an attitude of gratitude. And as I'm getting things together, um, I'm, I was just, just praying and the Lord was saying um, for us to be thankful for what is right now. What we have right now, be thankful. Uh, now, we all know there are many people that will love to have our situation. When I say our situation, things that we dis discard and take for granted, and, and because we've had this for a good while, but there's someone that is praying for what we have. And we have just set it to the side because we have just become so accustomed to it and so used to it, okay? So that's why we want to make it a point to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, giving God thanks. God, I want to thank you. As we're driving up in the parking lot, Lord, I thank you. Because A, all of us here drove or either were driven here on this parking lot. We could have been walking with our two Cadillacs. You know what I mean, two Cadillacs? <laughs> All right. We could have been walking with our own two feet, but we were driven here, or either we drove here. All right, let's see. Um, now, let's take a look at the word. Now, the, the title is an attitude, attitude of gratitude. Let's take a look at the word attitude. The definition of attitude. A settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Now let's just keep that on the screen right now, media team. A settled way of thinking. Now I like to think of something being settled. It's things have been moved and have been put into place and gotten comfortable, packed in, and where it's there in its place and it's settled in. If we were to move from one city to another, from one country to another, we bring these things in, our, our belongings, and we pack them in, we unpack them, and we get things, and we say, we have settled into our place. We've settled into this city. So an attitude is a, a settled way of thinking. What have you brought in place to let it sit down and get comfortable? What, th what was your thought process of, 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 of your being, your, your thoughts towards something? And so, and we're gonna get a little bit more into this. It's, it's also, if you, go, if you go a little bit further into it, attitude, it's an emotional choice of who's choosing, our choosing. It's an emotional choice. What's in here between your two ears? I cannot make you feel a certain way. 
You know, I, I cannot get into your brain and make you feel this way. God does not get into our brain and make us do things. From the very beginning, he's always given us a choice. We are made in the image of God. God, has all, God had a choice. He could have made us, but he, did. he could not have. He did. And he said, I'm going to make them like me. I'm going to make them have power to choose. We have a choice. A settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Okay? Now, again, it's an emotional choice of our choosing based upon the grounds of personal perception. Number one, if you're writing this down, write that down. Based upon personal perception. Personal perception, how you see the situation. It's personal, how I see it. The second is by personal experience. My attitude, my thought, my feeling about something is based upon my experience with it. I'll give you an example. Now, we're living in the age of technology, of there are two major phones that, um, that, that, that go in the market, I guess you can say. You have the Android platform, and you have the iOS, the Apple platform. Now, you can have an attitude against either or based upon your personal preference and experience. Some people don't like the one button. I need more buttons. I need a backspace button. I don't like the touch. I, I, I need to be able to, you know. Another good example is Coke or Pepsi. Based upon your personal experience and your perception of that company. Secondly, an emotional, or thirdly, an emotional choice of our choosing is based upon the grounds of outside influence. I can allow my attitude to change because of someone else's experience or perception. Once again, I said I, I can, I may allow my attitude to change based upon someone else's experience and their personal perception. Now, I'll give you a good example. Now, I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> As a young man, my mother, when we grew up, there was a large fast food chain restaurant. I'm not going to say the name. But we were told, don't go there because they put worms in their hamburgers. <laughs> Now, my mother's going to look at this. She'll be watching. She'll be saying, boy, she'll be calling me right now. I can't believe you put my business down the street. But perhaps this was something she was passed on to. <laughs> but don't go there because they put worms in their hamburgers. Now, my brother and my sister, they know exactly which fast food chain we're talking about. Because as years growing up, we would always pass that restaurant. Don't go there. They got worms and the hamburgers. And then when we got older, our friends were like, hey, let's go to so-and-so. Oh, no, you don't want to go there. They put worms in their hamburgers. So I allowed a third party to influence my attitude towards something else or towards someone. Don't go to that kind of church. Oh, they, they are a jumpity-jump church, and they just, oh, all they do is, but they've never stepped one foot inside to experience, why are they jumping? Why are they raising their hands? Why are they crying? Why, why, why do they seem to, to just be so joyful? So, but if we allow a third party to influence us, that can change our attitude. Now, now that we have the definition of attitude, um, again, we can, it's important not for, allow, for us to allow our attitude 
to change based upon someone else. It's important not to allow our attitude of faith be changed because of someone else, of their experience. We cannot allow their experience influence our experience, our encounter with the King of Kings. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. So the quality of being thankful, quality mean, meaning the degree of measurement, how much you measure it, you measure it greatly. Okay? My measurement of thankfulness is great when it comes to gratitude. The quality of being thankful and ready to show appreciation. I want us to think moving forward this concept of having an attitude of gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude. Your mind set on being thankful of what has happened and where you are. Now I'm gonna stop right here because often we will think of, of what's going to happen. And we will get happy and we will focus on better days are yet to come. And I'm thinking about what's getting ready to come. And so when you're focusing on the what's going to, on, and we don't know when. We don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know if it's going to happen next week, next month, or 20 years from now. So what will happen is, if we're being thankful and there's nothing wrong with being thankful for what God, what you're getting ready to do. Don't get me wrong. But if that's all you focus on, okay, you will lose sight of right now. And this is what happens when you begin to focus on what's getting ready to happen. Because your attitude, your emotions will begin to change because you're looking 15, 20 years from now, or it seems like it's 15, 20 years from now, and then your perception changes because you wanted it next week. Maybe it'll be here in two weeks from now. Maybe it'll be here in a month from now. And then all of a sudden it's like, when is it going to get here? And then your attitude changes and you think, it is, this ain't going to ever come. And your attitude will look, media team, your attitude will look a little bit like this. You'll be waiting for a certain situation like this. Media team, hello, that's my kids back there. Come on, be on cue, how about that trash? <laughs> You'll be waiting like this. Now what do you see there? See everybody waiting for the subway, waiting for the bus. <laughs> and the buses, see your attitude changes and it says the bus ain't ever coming. <laughs> All right? And the bus is right there. <laughs> Thank you, media team. <laughs> so if you keep focusing on what's getting ready to happen, your attitude changes and you begin to think it's like that. And you'll just be waiting, getting frustrated. <sighs> and then you begin to talk to one another. Dog, I thought I'd be here by now. I know, child. When are we getting to the promised land? Oh, I thought we'd be here. Then attitude changes. You went from, oh, we're going to the promised land, to when are we going to this promised land? Again, thank you, media team. My children, I bless the Lord. I'm thankful for my children. <laughs> it takes a lot of work back there to, to manage all those buttons and to to navigate between what's here and looking at their Facebook posts at the same time and, and Twittering and tweeting and... <laughs> but I'm thankful, you know. I believe it's Proverbs that says, your children are like arrows in your quiver, you know. I thank God for my children. I thank God for my children. 
I literally thank God. I, so I, my attitude is gratitude. Because you know what? Because it could have been nobody back there. <laughs> you know? There are times when I'm doing it all by myself and trying to, and nothing's linking up. So I'm thankful for my kids sleeping in the back. <laughs> Did he catch that? <laughs> when we think about being thankful, like I said, you can think of, you be thankful for the past. Because even if it's a negative thing, now, whoa, wait a minute, Pastor Carney, you mean thank God for the negative things? Well, because it takes sometimes the negative to lead you on the path to the positive things. Sometimes me making bad choices allow me to learn a lesson because it led me to where I am right now. Now put it this way, everything you've done in your past, everything, everything, all inclusive, led you to where you are right now. You are hearing the word of God. Yes, I'm going to give God thanks for all things. Because all things, the Bible says, not Pastor Carney, the Bible says, all things work together for the what? Good. So the negative things that happen is somehow working together for the good with the good thing, and God is going to get the glory at the end of it. I'll give you a good example. You can take it. You, want, you may remember this, may not. Um, a few, a while ago, I, I had a, a practical application. I had, um, I, I had an apple. I had a cinnamon stick. I had sugar. And I took the apple, and I took an apple core, and I crushed the apple. I sliced the apple. The apple was sliced into, 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 into multiple pieces. That was hurting to the apple that crushed the apple, that cut the apple. Has anyone ever been cut emotionally, hurt really deep? The cinnamon had to be grated. We grated the cinnamon. The sugar had to be picked up out of the cane and processed and green and grind and everything. And then we had to take all the other things, put it all together in a bowl and mix it and, and, and put it all together. And then after all of that stuff, see, this is what happens in life. We get taken out of areas, we get graded, and then we think this is it, but no, then we get mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. It's like, how did I get here? How did this happen to me? I, I don't even belong over here. How did I even get to IAC? I wasn't even looking to get to IAC. I wasn't even looking to log on and get this app. How's this app on my phone? Let me tell you, it's all working together for the good. Because at the end, once it's all mixed up and tumbled up and rolled all over, now it's just something else. It looks totally different than where you started from. And then God says, in the words of Kirk Franklin, it ain't over. It ain't over. He then takes you and goes, now I got you where, you, where, where I want you, son, where, where I want you, daughter. And you're thinking, okay, all right, Lord, even where you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Wait, wait, where are we going? Where are we going? I'm putting you in the oven. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Turn it up about 350 and leave it there for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes in the fiery furnace, Lord! <laughs> yes, 30 minutes in the fiery furnace. Because you thought you were just a, a piece of sugar. You thought you were just an apple seed, an apple cord. You thought you were just, j just a piece of nutmeg. But God takes you out as a beautiful pie. <laughs> so after, the, after it all settles through, Brother Greg, all the crazy things you went through, God says, hey, you are beautiful. Look at your finished product. All the craziness that you went through, look where you are now. So, and so what do we do before we get to that point? And see, see, we can think, if I'm told, oh, I'm going to be an apple pie, 
All right, and it's like, yes, we'll start focusing on the apple pie and wanting to be the apple pie. But God is saying, in each and every process, I want you to be thankful. I want you to be grateful. Uh, You've been plucked out. Be grateful. You've been graded. Be grateful. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him thanks at every phase. Because the end of the apple pie may not be in 10 minutes. It could be. Two months from now, could be two years from now, but be thankful where you are right now. Have an attitude of gratitude. Amen. It's important that we protect our attitude of gratitude. If you're writing it down, write that down. Protect your attitude of gratitude. Now, how do we protect it? How do I protect it when everything just seems to be, <laughs> I don't have nothing to be, yeah. See, again, it's what you choose to look at. If I, because we're, we're thinking, okay, one day I'm going to be an apple pie, and we will base our gratitude upon our situation being a chopped up apple. I'm just a chopped up apple. Who's going to want this? And and then we'll say, well, I know one day I'm going to be an apple pie. But I'm just this right now. So you fortify your attitude of gratitude by saying, God, I'm a chopped up apple. I've been chopped according to your purpose. Thank you, Lord, because you've got a plan for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for for this process right now. I don't understand everything, but God, I'm grateful. Because, Lord, you know, I'm in your kitchen. (laughs) I'm in your hands. You are the master chef. Start thanking God for what you have right now. And you continue to thank him and thank him. Start looking around and start looking at the things you have in your house. I can remember, Pastor Williams, I was going through a time of nobody knows the struggles. You know, we take the can, clink, 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 nobody knows. You know, we break up the harmonica, wah, 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 and getting all the jail, the jailbird blues. I, 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 I'm locked up, no one cares about me. I'm all by myself. We even sing the song, all by myself. Don't want to be. You know, we, we, we just, we do. <laughs> and, and we will allow ourselves just to have a self-pity party because of we're thinking of the things we don't have. Now, I, now, you all know me. I'm a techie. I'm a music, musicality type of guy and everything. And I can remember, and I've shared this before, I was watching, I used to love to put slideshows together in my early days. And and, and I, I put the slideshow together, and I'm looking at the pictures, and I had some don't want to be all by myself music playing in the background. And I'm clicking through the pictures, and I'm thinking, oh, wow. I look at this picture, and it's just like, oh, that's just so sad. Next picture, oh. And I'm looking, and these are the things that I saw. I saw this one picture. It was Aaliyah's fifth birthday. And, and I saw the couch that we had. I said, wow, I remember when we picked up that couch from off the street. Oh, what were we thinking? We couldn't, we couldn't afford to buy furniture. And if, uh, Remember the couch we saw? We saw a, a, a couch, a love seat. We picked it up, and I'm thinking, this is the furniture I got. Wow. And then I clicked another picture, and I look at the picture on the wall. Yeah, I remember when we got that picture. We got it on clearance at Walmart. Oh, couldn't afford much more. Next picture. I clicked the next picture. I, I know I'm telling my business, but I'm just, I'm just telling you how I was thinking. I began, to, I began to look at the, another picture, and I saw the TV, and I was like, oh, look at that big old behemoth of a TV. How ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. And, 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 and I began to say, oh, my, my daughter could only had, we only had, she only had two friends over for a birthday party. And I was just feeling really, really down, really sad. And God told me to change the channel. Take that sad Celine Dion music all by myself. <laughs> or whatever it is that you play, <laughs> you know. 
the thrill is gone. Well, whatever song you, whatever song you have, the devil tries to put in your mind. I'm not saying what you have in your playlist. Hopefully, it's all good stuff. But sometimes the devil will put a a a, a bad playlist in, in your ear, on your iPod, on, on your on your playlist. Who put this on your playlist? <laughs> Change the attitude, change, God had me change the station. So what I did, I changed the songs and went through the, through the exact same pictures. And then I began to look at that couch. I said, God, we didn't have a couch, but you blessed us with a couch. Thank you, Jesus. I began to say, I look at the picture, I said, God, we were looking to find something to decorate our wall. We saw that you gave us a, a sale to be able to buy that picture. And then when it came to my daughter and her friends, I said, Lord, she saw five years old that year. That's a blessing. She was supposed to die when she was born. And look at God. So I began to change my attitude. I began to have an attitude of gratitude about my situation. So therefore, we can take no matter where we are and change our way of thinking. So if you are living in a one-bedroom house with a half bath, start giving God thanks. God, I've got something over my head. God, I, it, it's now, and what we will say is, well, this ain't what I want. But no, start giving God praise for what you have. Matthew 25 tells us of a story. He said, be thou faithful over a few things. Can God trust us over the few? Are you a good steward of what you have? But, but what happens, we will look at what we don't have and forget about what. Again, it's always been a pleasure talking to you and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ through Kingdom Mindset. And I want to say, if you've enjoyed the message and you enjoy this broadcast, why don't you pray about becoming a partner to this ministry? One of the great things about what we do here at Kingdom Mindset is that this message isn't just for us here in the United States, but it goes all around the world. And so we're so thankful as we preach this gospel, um, we have churches and we have orphanages that we support in Kenya and Uganda. So if you wanna be a part of a greater, a greater body, a greater message, a greater effort, please consider partnering and praying to become a partner with this ministry. And you can do that by downloading our app, the IAC Delaware app, as well as going to our website at IACDelaware.com. And uh, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about us. Okay, so until then, God bless you. We'll see you next week on Kingdom Mindset. We pray that you enjoyed today's program. Feel free to connect with us by downloading the IAC Delaware app. There, you can watch services, send prayer requests, study the in-app Bible, and much more. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. Your faithful and consistent monthly support allows us to spread the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. If you would like to become a partner, simply log on to IACDelaware.com or text IACDelaware to 77977.